Hey guys, it's Lizard here, and in this video, I am going to be explaining everything you need to know to start winning more in Hypixel Bed Wars. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to effectively practice your Bed Wars methods outside of the actual game itself. This is going to include things like bridging practice, PvP, and overall mechanics. Also, if you're not subscribed, just consider subscribing. That's all I have to say. Let's get into it. Undoubtedly, the biggest aspect of Bed Wars that a lot of people lack is their ability to bridge. Now, there's two main places you can do this, which is on Hypixel in their bridging Bed Wars practice. Another great place to practice is MC Play HD. This server allows you to get your bridges timed and it's very, very competitive and a lot of people use it to get better and practice overall. But while we're on the topic of bridging, I want to bring up something that a lot of people just ignore. And this is the idea that speed is better than consistency. Now I know in a lot of my videos, you'll see me gob bridging. It'll look something like this. I'm here to tell you today, if you want to win Bedwars more, don't do that. Now the reason for this isn't that it's bad, but more or less impractical and inconsistent. Most people that know how to gob bridge aren't consistent enough, so to improve at Bedwars and improve upon this, speed bridging is honestly a lot better and a lot more consistent. If you're trying to win, falling in the void over and over again is going to be something that costs you a lot of time in the game and it's going to give your opponents a massive advantage overall. Another reason you might be losing your Bedwars games is because you're losing the fights that you're putting yourself into. Now this could be anything from your first rush to the final fight or just any battles in between. Now Bedwars PvP PvP relies mostly on your combos as opposed to using projectiles and all of those kind of things. In order to effectively combo in Bedwars, you're going to need to learn how to combo in the first place. Now what I recommend doing for this is this server I'm on right now is called pvp.land and if you go here to fight a bot, you can set the difficulty. The difficulty ranges from easy all the way to hacker and all of these have different levels of reach and different CPS levels. These bots kind of represent different skill levels of players and when you're starting off with the easy bot that clicks 3 CPS and can only reach you from one block. All you have to do to not get hit by it is hit it from more than one block away, which allows you to kind of practice controlling yourself instead of just running in a straight line like this. What I mean by this is a lot of times I see newer players in Bedwars just running, holding W, and just kind of fighting like this. And maybe you might want to fight overall doing this, but it's really, really not viable in comparison to something like this. This doesn't even take many CPS either. I'm clicking like four CPS right now, and I'm still able to easily combo this bot. Once you're able to consistently get big combos on the easy bot, you can work your way up to the medium and hard bot. When you get to the point where you can comfortably beat the medium bots, you're probably going to win most of your Bedwars fights, and if you can compete with the hard ones, that's a sign that you're probably going to be winning most of your Bedwars encounters. Another great way to practice your PvP is to step up your game and fight some of the best players Minecraft has to offer. This server is MyMen.club, and it is known to have some of the best players in Minecraft, but also some of the most toxic players. The best MyMen modes I recommend playing are Boxing, which is the first person to get 100 hits against their opponent, no debuff, which is also good for combos, and Gapple. If you really want to focus on your hits overall, Boxing and Gapple are going to be the best ones for you. Ooh. Playing against the players on here is definitely a big step up from playing against the robots, so if you want something in between, I just overall recommend Hypixel Duels. Hypixel also offers some modes for practicing using your Bedwars utility, such as the Water Bucket Clutch, and they also have ones for practicing your Fireball Jumps. These modes aren't practical whatsoever, but you can just kind of use them to mess around and practice. Inside of Bedwars, there's also a couple things we can do to make our game a lot easier, and they lie within the shopkeeper. If you don't know how to customize your quick buy, you go into whatever you want, shift click it, and then click the slot you want. Another thing that a lot of people don't know is you can click this hotbar manager. Once you click the blaze powder, you can also choose where you want your melee, your tools, your blocks, your utility, and everything else to go. This just makes it generally a lot easier to navigate your shop and make it out of your base easier. At the end of the day, practicing outside of Bedwars is going to be good for your game. If if you're not playing enough Bedwars, you're probably not improving that much at Bedwars either. The reason for this is there's just a lot of game sense that you can't really practice, and while you can practice the mechanics you're improving upon, while you can improve upon your individual mechanics, your game sense and other factors need to be learned through actually playing the game. However, if you don't want to queue a full game of Bedwars, there's a lot of Bedwars practice servers out there that you can use as an alternative to actually playing Bedwars itself, and these are very good for when you don't want to play a full game of Bedwars, but you still want to practice your mechanics. These also allow you to learn things like your first rush and how to finish them faster. Another piece of advice when you're actually playing Bedwars is to not take it too fast. Now, in my videos, I mostly just rush. I run around the map as fast as possible and I take out bases like crazy. My goal when I play Bedwars is to just take out as many bases as possible as fast as I can. When faced against good players, don't worry too much about trying to rush. Focus more of your efforts instead on your actual game movement, how you're getting around the map, getting diamonds, emeralds, and all that stuff if necessary. Clearly I'm a Bedwars pro. Kind of forgot that, that that hole was there. 
When I talk about game sense that you can learn from Bedwars, I also mean scenarios like this, where I can see that most of the people still alive are on this end of the map. They're not really pressuring me, so if I felt it was necessary, I would have plenty of time to run around middle, grab emeralds, or grab diamonds, and just get stacked out of my mind. In this game, I'm not too concerned because there's a final kill to get and one more bed, so I don't have to do too much, and if I play aggressive, I can probably finish the game without having to delay it too much. I'm kind of trapped here. Uh-oh. Oh, I've now pushed that base twice, and both times I have not gotten successfully. There's just too many people to try to get by, and I'm struggling, so I'm going to actually take a step back and just try to grab some diamonds for upgrades. Now, I already bought sharpness earlier in the game because I play very aggressive, so sharpness is a huge benefit to me because as long as I can hit the opponent more times than they hit me, I'm going to have a huge HP advantage by the end of the fight. Now that I already have that, I think I'm going to go for an armor and a minor fatigue. Those are probably the best things other than sharpness, and they will help me in two different respects, one being PvP and the other being defending my bed. Because I have so many gapples, I can choose when I want to push and when I want to back up and just kind of take a step back and heal. I see this guy's over here. I'm gonna push this, but I'm also gonna go into free look just to see if he rushes. That way I can see both things at once and we can get over here pretty safely. I'm gonna go up here because I see this person doesn't seem to have any more fireballs and they don't seem to have blocks either. Okay, they do have blocks. Okay, I lobbed them off. They have a minor fatigue, so I will get the bed here. And like I said, I have gapples, so I can do this. And I might do another one. And now I'm just stacked. They can't, they can't beat me. So that's gonna be a GG for them. And now we're stuck with one final kill. This guy, oh, I fell off. The fire damage is so annoying. All right, so now we have a bed and we're fighting a final 1v1. We're pretty stacked. We have prot, sharpness, etc. So I am going to buy these. I'm going to buy some ladders to try to negate any fall damage that's inflicted upon me. And I'm also going to buy some fireballs. I'm just going to spend as much as I can because I don't want to draw this fight out any longer than it needs to go on for. And I just really want to wrap it up. So I'm going to use all of my money and try to get some good attacks. I'm also not sure where this guy is anymore. He was over in this area. Oh, there he is. Okay. We see him. I might actually be able to just go for a, uh, a fireball. It's a risky one at that. I don't think he knows we're here, so we can just kind of knock him off. That's a GG. He almost rode that fireball, but that should be a GG. There we go. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope you learned quite a bit, and hopefully you can win some more Bed Wars games. If you're not subscribed already, please just consider subscribing. That would be absolutely awesome, but that is going to do it for today. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.